Hello everyone, welcome back to British Murders. This is another, yes, another special episode in between my seasons, but we're back to true crime this week. It's not a movie review, it's it's not an English case, but it is true crime. I've got my mate Bobster back on from Bobster. Killer Stories. Bobster, yeah, Bobby Holmes from Killer Stories Podcast. Welcome. Thank you. And we are going to be, as I said, discussing another true crime case from the land of america north america <laughs> united states of america it's all the same to us we just say america and it means north america which includes canada that makes no sense it does it does yeah. yes yeah it does. so this is a uh, the third one the first one we did was remind me was oh the first i one did, did i did the eyeball killer charles the eye charles albright charles yeah. albright and then you did Pee Wee gaskins didn't you <laughs> yeah yeah so if anyone doesn't know basically bobby comes on my show tells an american story i go on bobby's and tell an english story which we're going to record them back to back now so if you're listening to this the other one's probably out and vice versa and i just sit here and react live to the story <laughs> he knows nothing i know nothing just like my listeners hopefully and it's yeah. at this point where i hand it over to you awesome so i didn't choose my typical story to tell this week in fact, you are probably going to be pissed, and pissed, I mean angry, <laughs> American not pissed, not, yeah, not drunk. British pissed, Human. right? Human. But this case is unsolved, and that's Ooh. why when you asked me earlier how many perpetrators there were, I couldn't answer, because we don't know. Um, cool. And I know you only like to cover cases that are solved, but the rules don't apply to killer British murder stories. <laughs> As of right now, I've not recorded my episode with you yet, and uh -oh. yeah. well, you did it to me before. The very first one you did with me was unsolved. You're like, it's not my show. I don't care. Yeah, fuck it. I'll tell a shit right. story on your show. <laughs> but okay, so this is the Chicago Tylenol murders, and this event actually changed the way we consume medicine. So since you had never heard of it, I thought it's one you should know. I don't know if this differs. Like, is Tylenol a common? <laughs> thing there or do you guys have a different so you don't have johnson and johnson makes it tylenol is kind of acetaminophen so sorry there's <laughs> acetaminophen is the like type of medicine Ty tylenol is the brand so i don't know what you take then what do you take for it's headache? What medicine headache medicine uh-huh or just a pain over the counter pain reliever just take paracetamol so or ibuprofen yeah, we have ibuprofen. I don't know what that other one is, you said. You don't know what paracetamol is? Uh-uh. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you don't know what acetaminophen nice. is. <laughs> yeah, but paracetamol is so, worldwide, surely. I don't know. Does it have this, like, a brand? Is that, like, a generic form of medication in this or a yeah, brand? It's a form of medication. It's like ibuprofen. Yeah, so, so like Advil is our brand that may, you know what I mean? Like, at, yeah. how do I say this? Anyways, let's get to the story. We obviously have a different <laughs> medicines there and here, but I don't really take over-the-counter pain meds unless I absolutely have to. So headache is probably the only thing I would take it for. And I, you're probably going to want to take a more homeopathic way for your headache after hearing this story because illegal drugs kind of crazy basically. it's kind of no like a headache stick i use it's like an essential oil and you put it on your temples you've never done that for a headache wow i'm talking to an alien here oh my gosh no it's like peppermint oil mainly but that's what i use first if my headache's still there then i'll take normally so you, you, you rub a stick on your head and then if you've still uh -huh. got a headache you'll take some medicine yeah Okay. Peppermint oil helps with a headache a lot. You should mm -hmm. try it. <laughs> okay. All right. So to the story, it all started in Chicago, which is in the state of Illinois. And this is in 1982. And in this day and age, like I stated earlier, acetaminophen, primarily the brand Tylenol was the number one choice of pain reliever. And people literally popped them like candy. They're like, hey, I'm feeling off today. Take two Tylenol. Like, that's what I'm saying. It takes a lot for me to actually take medicine. But back then, it seemed like everyone was just taking Tylenol all the time. So September 29th, 1982, 12-year-old Mary Kellerman woke up not feeling well. She had a sore throat and a runny nose. Again, not something I would probably take 
paying Sounds medication like me right for now. <laughs> But her parents suggested that she stay home from school and get some rest. She was given one capsule of extra strength Tylenol. And a couple of hours later, she got up and walked into the bathroom. Her father heard something drop to the ground and yelled out, asking if she was okay. There was no response. So he asked again, louder, Mary, are you okay? Nothing. And I mean, you don't really want to barge in on your 12-year-old daughter in the bathroom. I get that. But she wasn't responding, so he goes in and finds her unconscious on the bathroom floor. Paramedics were not able to revive her, and she was pronounced dead at 9.56 a.m. And medical examiners were informed that she wasn't feeling well and took the Tylenol. But other than that, she was a healthy 12-year-old girl, and her death was a mystery. And she had taken Tylenol before many times without a reaction, so linking that to her death was not even taken into consideration. But that very same day, 27-year-old Adam Janus, I guess is how you would say, J-A-N-U-S, Janus. Janus. I've never, Janus. I've never seen that last name, but Adam Janus stayed home from his job as a postal worker. He felt like he had a cold coming on. So he picked up his children from preschool, stopped by a Juul drugstore for Tylenol, popped two, and lay down to get some rest. Within minutes, he walked back into the kitchen, clutching his chest, and fell to the ground. He, too, was rushed to the hospital, but his heart had stopped. And they tried multiple times to resuscitate him, but they were unsuccessful. His death was listed as cardiac arrest that same day. So this, all these are happening in, tw in the same day. Just like boom, 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 all these deaths. No one can figure out why. So this is the very same day, another 27-year-old, Mary Lynn Rayner. She was at home. She had just had a baby one week prior. So she was still having all the aches and pains of delivery, took some Tylenol, and collapsed to the floor. Her husband comes home, finds her lying on the floor. An ambulance is called. She's rushed to the hospital. But just like the others, she couldn't be revived. Can you imagine being married to someone? You have four children. One is a newborn, and your wife dies. So you're left with four children as a dad. No. That's so sad. And I, I can't even imagine being left single parent with one, but four <laughs> and one being a newborn. So sad. But back to Adam Janice. So he was the postal worker who passed away from cardiac arrest, right? Mm -hmm. His family members came back to his house after the news of his death to be with his wife and child to grieve and plan the funeral, whatever they needed to do. And Adam's 25-year-old brother, Stanley, suffered from chronic back pain. And as you can imagine from the day's events, he had a splitting headache. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> yes. A so Stanley asked his wife, 19-year-old Teresa, to get him some Tylenol. So she goes into the medicine cabinet and grabbed Adam's bottle of Tylenol. She gave Stanley two pills and took two herself. And I can't find any information if she was feeling ill or had a headache or if she just had a rough day and thought, why not? <laughs> like I said, out. just like candy. They just took it. It's crazy to think. But Stanley, unfortunately, did not survive the day. And Teresa also fell extremely ill and died the next day. And these were healthy young adults. There's really no health concerns with any of these people who died. So this is what kind of finally caught the attention of medical professionals because a man dies, his family comes over, and then his brother and sister also, sorry, brother and sister-in-law also mysteriously die. So that makes five deaths in the span of two days. Doctors were overlooking, because Teresa didn't die until the next day, um, doctors were overlooking the fact that these people all recently consumed Tylenol. So they didn't put two and two together yet. Tylenol is still out on the on the shelves. That evening, 31-year-old Mary McFarland was working at Illinois Bell, which is essentially a phone company. Fun fact, they claim to be the first to introduce call waiting. Do you remember call waiting? Thanks for that. Did you have that? We, we have you know? hold. We just call it being on hold. Oh, well, this is like you're on the phone and you hear a beep, like someone's calling you and you can flip back and forth. Do you, can you yeah, do that? Yeah, it's just putting them on hold. I mean, yeah. I don't even have a home phone anymore, but you know, when I lived at, my mom has one. You do it on your mobile. Well, yeah, but this is the landline because it's, you know, 82. But yeah. anyways, I just 
remember that being super cool. Like, hang on, someone else is calling me, and you like flip, yeah, <laughs> flip back and forth. And, uh, As a teenager, yeah, super cool. So she told her coworkers that she had a terrible headache, and I'm sure you can guess what happened next. She took Tylenol and sadly died shortly after. So investigators went to the home of Adam Janice. He is the one where him, his brother, and his sister-in-law all died within his house, and they were trying to figure out what caused these deaths. Along with investigators was Nurse Jensen, who had been the one working with the Janice family at the hospital. And while searching their home, she was the one looking through the medicine cabinet because she had the medical experience. The Tylenol had six pills missing and three people dead. Most often, people took two pills. So she found this really suspicious. And on a gut feeling, she took the bottle back to the hospital. Once the team began brainstorming, Nurse Jensen sat the bottle on the table and said, I don't know how or why, but the Tylenol is the cause. And everyone was like, there's no way. Like they couldn't, there's, like I said, everyone took Tylenol. And if you haven't had a reaction previously, why would you have a reaction now? No one believed that that could possibly be the cause. How come your pills come in bottle form? How do yours come? In like a cardboard packet in like a, a silver, it's like a foil. Right. Like, we're like we're going to get there. You know, a piece of card where you, you <laughs> pop them out. Do you know what I mean? You pop yeah. them out like that. Uh -huh. we don't, we don't oh, okay. So like, so even you don't get like a bottle of 24 capsules ever, even covered in foil? No, you, you just get okay. Right. What did you get? Eight. About, so I think it's 16. You normally get in a pack of paracetamol or ibuprofen. Or even aspirin comes that way. Hmm. No, most are in bottles. I've I've bought things, as you're talking about, like cold medicine and things like that, that you pop through the foil. But we will get that because this is 1982. You are how old? 32. Yeah. So this is, this is how they used to do it. And we'll get you more into that. But literally... No, but I don't remember this either, but I'm just telling you why you know it how you do today. We're going to we're going to see. I think all of that is because of this. And maybe different countries okay. didn't pertain. But anyways, obviously by the name of today's story, we know the Tylenol is what's responsible. But you're not familiar with this case. Do you want to guess what's going on? Um, I would do the pills come in, obviously, capsules you can take apart? Yeah. So I would assume that so, instead of Tylenol, someone's put maybe like, what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? You know, like, like, uh, cyanide? Cyanide, yes. <laughs> uh, is it, it's just cyanide or rat poison or something. In yeah, it. right, right, right. So that's exactly what happened because back in 82 so how the medis the medication was packaged it was literally in a bottle with a cotton ball on top of the pills and a, and a lid that just popped on nothing uh, no security seal. Seals, no yeah. no isn't that insane mm -hmm. can't believe it took till 1982 to someone to fuck with them i don't know it's crazy but yes at first glance the um two pill bottles were were taken in as evidence. The Mary, the 12 year old girl, they took her bottles and then the bottle from the Janice family. Both of them, an investigator was kind of looking through, nothing seemed off, all the capsules were in there, but there was a very strong smell. I did not know this. Did you know cyanide smelled like almonds? Um, uh, not off the top of my head. I probably read it mm -hmm. somewhere, but yeah. I had no idea Never and only, only half the population can smell it. So that makes me want to sniff some cyanide, see if I'm the, the special one that can Never, smell almonds. Well, you won't live to tell the tale. That's the shame. <laughs> no, you can, I think you can smell it because this guy smelled it and he's like, oh, it's almonds. So it's cyanide. They, they knew immediately whenever they smelled the almonds that that's what it was. Remembering the difference between smelling and snorting. <laughs> right. Don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, someone had opened the capsules and laced them with cyanide. And the contents were tested. The results were pretty shocking. There was 100 times the amount necessary to kill a human being present in each pill. So there's absolutely no chance of survival if you took one of these pills. And they were taking and, two. Yeah. 
Uh, the the twelve year old just took one, but everyone yeah. else took two. And um, do you know how cyanide works? I mean, I knew it was poison, but I guess I didn't realize like what it did to your body. Does it not? Yeah. Is it something to do with your lungs? Like, does it not? You're pretty good still. Restri- restri- it- <laughs> something to do with the airflow or something. Yeah. I can't remember. And in- inhibits the red blood cells from absorbing oxygen. So mm. both your heart and your brain need oxygen to survive, obviously. So results in brain damage and heart failure. So that's why they were just assuming cardiac arrest, even though it's like people in their 20s don't, you know randomly have heart attack well they do but not not, you know this many people all in one day kind of thing so although they had discovered the cause there was no way of knowing how many bottles were contaminated and these victims bought their tylenol from different drug stores but all the bottles had the same control number listed so they thought someone went and bought a bunch of tylenol took it home laced them and then put them all back on the shelves in different stores, just yeah. randomly throughout the city. And okay. it wasn't wasn't done because, yeah, they figured out what's going on, but it's not like they immediately pulled everything off the shelves. So people are still buying Tylenol. And 9.30 that night, 35-year-old Paula Prince landed at the O'Hara Airport, which is in Chicago. She worked as a flight attendant and just finished from a flight in from Vegas. And on the way back home, she stopped at a Walgreens, purchased a bottle of Tylenol, and she was pronounced dead at 3.15 a.m. Like I said earlier, Johnson & Johnson is the company who produces Tylenol. Mm-hmm. The next morning, an attorney from J&J came to the lab where the contents of the capsules had been tested, and they explained to him that their product had been contaminated and the public needed to know. They held a press conference and all they did was just warn the consumers. They didn't, uh, they didn't recall anything. They're just like, Hey, if you have Tylenol, you should probably just not take it. (laughs) Even though, yeah, we know there's cyanide in it. We don't know how many bottles are affected. So, you know, just don't buy it. Don't take it. But the nurse that was the one who kind of discovered the the issue was the Tylenol. She thought that was ridiculous, called the police, demanded Tylenol be removed from the shelves. So finally, Johnson & Johnson officially recalled Tylenol, but only the lot number MC2880, as if it couldn't happen to any other lots. They're just assuming because this person or persons took from all one probably like bought it all in one place they were all from the same lot and then he contaminated it and then he put it back on the shelves that it was kind of all from that same lot but that's kind of silly so the concern now is that people are aware that the capsule medication was laced with cyanide and that crime is way too easy to replicate so as you know with most crimes then come copycat crimes and there were before they were able to make any major changes with um packaging of other things. There were there were multiple people to follow in the footsteps of this and other brands, not just Tylenol, were laced and more people died, unfortunately. But yes, yeah, so the bottles, like we said earlier, they're just a bottle, cotton ball over the pills and a lid. There was no protective um, seal or anything to prevent tampering. And by the end of the day, the mayor of Chicago required all Tylenol be pulled from the shelves within the city limits. Took a whole another four days for Johnson & Johnson to issue a nationwide recall. So there's, I can't even believe that it wasn't immediate. Yeah. Right? You would think. Seems a bit sus. Because what if you don't watch the news and you don't know? I I found out yesterday about drugs. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, drugs. I found out that, you know, dandelions, mm-hmm. the weeds that everyone hates. Yeah. Apparently, the dandelion root, if you clean that up and peel it of all the shy and eat it, that's mm-hmm. that's meant to be good for your heart. Mm-hmm. But the, the people that own the weed killer yeah. are the uh-huh. same people that own the heart medication companies. So the people that okay. sell people heart medication also sell the weed killer so that you kill the weeds that would prevent you getting heart issues so that you buy no. heart medication off them. How mad's that? 
I thought you were going to tell me dandelions were poisonous or something. And I'm like, I think no. people make dandelion soup or yeah, something. Very weird, medicinal. Right? Yeah. Dandelions, no. And I used to, I know this is weird, but I used to like, <laughs> you take the stem and you cut it in like four pieces and we would like stick our tongue on it and then it would curl down. Do you know what I'm No, I do. No, I do. What you're talking about. <laughs> So yeah, I just put my tongue all up on them dandelions. So I was hoping you weren't going to tell me it's poisonous. But <laughs> that is an interesting fact. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. Where were we? Nationwide recall. Finally. Law enforcement has no idea who's responsible for the tampering. Because this is, like I said, 1982. Security cameras are not widely used. And some places did have them, but it was mainly just the entrance into the drugstore. It's not like it's inside. You can't see the aisles and who's putting it back on the shelf. Yeah. Um, and like most unsolved cases, a bunch of weirdos call in and confess to this crime. I don't I don't understand Why do false confessions. Do that? I don't know. So I guess they they want to be famous, even if it's like a horrific thing, like randomly murdering innocent people. But it's like it was a media circus. So not mm -hmm. just in that area. Nation. I don't know. Like I said, if it was international or how you guys did your thing, maybe you were smart from the beginning and sealed everything. <laughs> we were too trusting. I have no idea if this caused everything to change internationally or if it's just within the States. But don't know. Maybe. I don't know either. You don't have to look into it. There were th <laughs> there were thousands of leads, but nothing stuck. There was one strong lead. It was an ex employee of Johnson and Johnson, and he had a concern with the talc powder, which apparently is an ingredient that was used in the facility. He saw that there was a green substance forming on the powder, and he thought it was from mold growing on damp oak pallets that were kept in the talc mines. But he was fired shortly after voicing his concern. So police interviewed him and Detective Hoberg said, quote, he didn't seem to have an ax to grind, whatever that means. So I don't Did know you, if it's just a gut feeling. <laughs> He's not our guy. Talc mines. Mm hmm. That's that's what the, uh, the source said. I don't know where. You said, you said pallets. I assume you meant in like a warehouse. Uh-huh. So I guess within the mine, they're probably stacking pallets or putting things on pallets and then hauling it away. I don't know. But yeah, like a wooden pallet. So within the mine, they are when you probably... Hear, when you hear mining, though, you think of like coal and yeah. gold. My... <laughs> talcum powder. Gold. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess you, you mine quite a few things, including talcum powder. There was some, powder. something here a few years ago with talcum powder. It might have been Johnson mm -hmm. & Johnson. They had to recall loads of talcum powder. Really? Yeah. Might have been. Can't remember I why. Mean, probably the, the green stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I said, this was way back. I think he was fired in 1978 or something. But again, he was eliminated as a suspect because they didn't think he had an ax to grind. <laughs> so Wednesday, October 6th, Johnson & Johnson received a letter from someone claiming to be responsible. He demanded $1 million for the sender to stop tampering of medications. And they did trace this back to a man who was living in New York City named James Lewis, and he became the number one suspect. And he did have a history of mental illness. He was adopted, later diagnosed with schizophrenia. As a late teen, he actually attempted suicide using over-the-counter pain medications, kind of like Tylenol. <laughs> and then he was admitted into a psychiatric hospital, and his family thinks this was all an elaborate plan to avoid being drafted into the U.S. Army and being mm. shipped off to Vietnam. So... Very possible. A million dollars back then will have been quite a lot of money now. Oh, a lot, yes. So, I mean, you some didn't do people the think. Did you? No, sorry. It's not good enough. <laughs> Just not good enough. Just give it a goog, Stu. You can give you're good at that. <laughs> Talk, talking like me now. <laughs> Jesus. Are you Googling it? No. No, you're you looking up at your screen like you do when you Google. I was, so. was going to, but I didn't want all the clicking and stuff. I didn't want to. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'll look then. afterwards. Back to James. This was not his first run in with the law. He was actually charged with murder back in 1978. <laughs> 
He worked at a tax accounting firm and a client of his, Raymond West, went missing. There was a note left on Raymond's door and it said that he was out of town and it was typed on James's personal letterhead. Raymond was later found in the attic of his home, dismembered, wrapped in sheets, and placed into garbage bags. But he could not be proven, so he was innocent until proven guilty. I don't know enough facts about the case to have an opinion of his guilt, but the case was dismissed due to lack of evidence. So no one knows who killed Raymond. But either way, this guy sounds a little sketchy, sounds like a good uh, suspect for the Tylenol murders, knowing his history now. Regardless of his guilt or innocence, he wasn't able to be linked to the Tylenol murders either. They couldn't place him in Chicago during that time frame, even though he sent the letter admitting it was him and demanding the money. He couldn't be tied to being in Chicago. So he also kind of got away with that if, if it was him. Regardless of that, he did end up in jail for extortion for, you know, demanding the money served 13 years and was released on parole in 1995. So there's a couple of theories from people on the task force and I'm interested to hear what you think. Okay. Superintendent Brechek, I think that's how you say it, it's spelled really funky, believed there was an intended target. So they think that one of the people who died was, um, like I said, targeted for a murder and then they laced all the other bottles to kind of throw off the connection between the murderer and that person. But I don't, I don't really like that theory. <laughs> How would they guarantee that that bottle got into their possession? Exactly. That's why I think that one's kind of silly. But firefighter Keyworth had this to say, quote, I personally think that the person or persons involved in this, my gut feeling was that their purpose was to bring the United States to its knees. Look at the power we have. We can shut down the entire economy. We can control the world. And for a short period of time, they did. In today's world, it would be domestic terrorism. We didn't have that terminology back then, but it was actually the first case of domestic terrorism in the country. And I think that makes mm. a whole lot more sense. Um, like you said, there's no way to tell who was going to buy the Tylenol, let alone when or where. So yeah. I don't I don't feel like there could have been a target specific that, person. When, when you think of the word terrorism, it's about spreading fear and terror ism and if you're thinking shit i'm scared to buy this i'm scared to buy that i can't get because it, it might be laced that is fear mongering and Terrible. and not just medication food everything like milk even what did i say i say soda what do you guys say fizzy pop <laughs> just say uh, pop yeah kind of, i kind heard of. We, we we don't uh, call it soda. Lorraine's we, we call it what it is we call it specific we say kind of Fanta, kind of Coke. Oh, we don't call okay. it soda, generic. We I call it pop it is. normally, but then everywhere else I've lived outside of Pennsylvania has said soda. A couple so. of cold pops. <laughs> A quarter pop, that's what we used to call it. It was like 25 cents and it was super generic. But you can't just say, I want a pop, because you'd be like, well, what flavor? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Be like, Mom, when you're going to the store, can you get me some pop? She knows. No, no, like. no, but if, if you said get me, if I said get us a fizzy drink, they'd be like, well, what the fuck do you want? There's a Fanta, there's Sprite, 7-Up, Coke, Diet Coke, Lucasid. <laughs> I hear you. You know what? In the South, I think it was what I was living in the South, they call everything a Coke. Even if it's a Sprite or a Dr. Pepper, they like call everything Coke. It's just How weird. is that? Yeah. Yeah. You should be allowed to call your language English. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, what we invented. Yeah. I do think that they were able to um, get some DNA from those bottles because the case was closed, but, you know, more we recently they... they I don't know if it's more fingerprints that were on the capsules or I don't know what it is that they have, but they did reopen the case and they've been randomly like testing people still trying to find who's responsible, but still unsolved, unfortunately. But like I said, this event changed how medications and even food, different things, people were freaking out. Like I said, milk, whatever, they wouldn't buy anything until it, they revamped the packaging of everything to have tamper-proof 
sealed. Do you lids. have the, the on jars? Do you have the depressed? If it's depressed, it means it's been opened. You know, like a yes, uh huh. Like a jar yeah, of pickles, like a, let's say. Button, yeah. Almost. It'll yeah. clicky click when you press on it now. <laughs> yeah. So, it and most if things. It's not been tampered with, yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, most medications now will have a seal, like the foil seal on the top of the bottle, and then usually come inside of a cardboard box now. So, like double sealed. And with a child protective. Some, oh, thing. yeah. Lid. Yeah. Yes. And like we said about milk and pop. <laughs> That they have the double piece of plastic that's combined, and then once you twist it, it breaks apart. So, you know, they came out with everything to kind of make the consumer more comfortable. What? Your milk does what? Okay, so we've got a plastic lid. Just like if you buy a bottle of Coke, right? And, And it's like there's a thin ring of plastic, and then the bottle cap, and it's all connected. And then when you twist it, it comes yeah. apart. We don't have that. What? What do you have? We have the twisty lid, but the the uh-huh. r- the rim that disconnects isn't on that. But there's a okay. like a plastic seal on top, almost like really? the pills. It's not foil; it's like plastic generally. Really, over your milk. Yeah, and then you peel peel that tab off, and then you mm. just put the lid back on. There's no. It's it's not like a, a bottle of coke. I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. it perforates, doesn't it? It's not like yes, that. right? Huh? Interesting. No, our milk is. Pretty much like, unless it comes in a carton, obviously. But yeah, that's disgusting. I don't get the carton milk. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, they also changed the type of medication. So no one wanted to take a capsule anymore. So they changed it to tablet and they put a coating on it so that it was easier to swallow. Because no one wanted to take a tablet because they like stick to your throat and yeah, you know, it's super hard to swallow. But I mean, I still get some things I feel like come in capsule form, but. We, you know, have them sealed now. You get paracetamol here for like 10p. You know, I don't know what that means. What, 10p? <laughs> no. 10 pence. Oh, yeah, no. Pence is uh, like our sorry. equivalent of cents <laughs> to you. Oh, cents. Pence cents. 100 pence in a pound, 100 cent in a dollar. You guys are all nice and even with your hundreds and 100 degree boil. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Zero is freezing. It, it re- Hundred is boiling, not thirty. Really does make- what, what's freezing? Thirty. Oh. <laughs> thirty-two. <laughs> thirty-two. What's, yeah. what's boiling? Hundred and thirty-three or something. Two twelve. But yeah, it's weird. What's boiling. I don't. I don't deny it. Yeah. Fahrenheit in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So do you measure distance in? Do you do miles? Miles. Mm-hmm. Miles an hour. Miles per hour, yeah. Yeah, per hour, yeah, whatever. So you say kilometer or kilometer? Kilometer, that's more Europe, that. That's Europe. Kilometer. Kilometer, yeah, kilometer. (laughs) Kilometers an hour, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of pretty much covered everything I had, except for tampering with products is now a federal crime. Is it? So, Yeah. Federal. I'm so interested. What, federal is it? That's the whole nation, right? Na- federal nation. Yes. Because mm-hmm. you have so, federal, state, county laws, don't you? I would say mainly federal, state. I assume there's some differences. Per yeah, I guess like weird things like if your animal has to be on a leash or not kind of goes by county. But hmm. do you have to have your animals on a leash? No. Really? You can just like walk your dog and it's not a law that they have to be You can, but I don't think you should be allowed to really. Mm. We got in trouble. We took our dogs down to uh, the elementary school (laughs) and we were just throwing the ball in the field. It was the first time I ever did it and I didn't think about it. The janitor came out and he had his arms crossed and he was just staring at us. And I was like, mom, I think we should leave. (laughs) So we walk up there and I was like, are we not allowed to be here? He's like, you are, but they aren't. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, it's actually very illegal. So I was telling my husband, I was like, what's the um, measurement of illegalness? Like a little bit illegal, a lot illegal, very illegal. <laughs> I don't know. I guess just because if they poop and you don't clean it up and then kids are playing there at school is the only reasoning I can see for it. But Illegalness. Yeah. Wow. Anyways. 
<laughs> so that was uh, the story of the Chicago <laughs> Tylenol murders. I just think, like I said, very important to know. I would, I'm interested to know what it was like there and if this influenced the UK. Well, if anyone listening knows, let me know. Well, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> tell us and I'll pass it on and, you know. Not as gruesome and brutal and crazy as most of my stories, but... No, it's interesting, though. It gets you thinking. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's less is more in it. Rather yeah, than and I, I just... Chopped his head off <sighs> and it bled. <laughs> Kept him under the floorboards for six months. Yeah. Ugh, the smell. Yeah, cool. So remind everyone where they can find your show. Yeah. Kind of stories. So... I am also on YouTube, um, so you can follow me. I'll, I'll put my link tree in, or Stu will put the link tree in. You've just said you're also on YouTube without saying what you're actually on first. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm also on this. Guys, I'm obviously a podcast, <laughs> and then, you Where know, I'm also, on, I'm also on YouTube. I am called Killer Stories Podcast, and I'm on every podcast platform you can think of more than likely is there anything we're not on through spreaker i feel like um can pretty much be found no, i think we're on everything yeah yeah you, so. can, you can find me type in killer stories you'll see me and uh social media facebook instagram tiktok which i've really really been not doing anything on tiktok but at killer stories podcast my twitter is at killer stories pc cool and that does it for another this is the last of my off-season specials. And the finale. Yeah, the special. finale, yeah. So I always do one with Lorraine, one with you, and then the one I did this time with John and my mate Dav. Mm-hmm. I like to do three. It's supposed to give me a chance to get ahead and write more episodes, but I just never do. It's, it doesn't <laughs> happen. You know, I listen to that one until you're like, this is so much wrestling, and if you don't like wrestling, it's not for you, and I kind of stopped listening. <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather say that six minutes in than be like, yeah. When does the true crime start? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about wrestling, but yeah, it's not for everyone. But I did um, like you and Lorraine's. That was good. Yeah. As of next week, I'm back with the first episode of season four. I've got my episode list. I can't remember who it's on, but it's this season is all from uh, recommendations from listeners. So people that have emailed me in. I've made notes of who's emailed what case in, and so far I think I've got eight or nine out of the ten for season four. So if you want to be featured in episode ten with a shout out, send me an email, British Murders Podcast at gmail.com. And the first episode will be next week. Ten episodes straight, hopefully. I had a break in middle of season three because I just forgot to write an episode, so I just did a movie mm. one. I had a break last week. Just yeah. needed it. But I am doing 10 minute movie reviews. I was going to release them each week in between season four on here as a podcast, but I think I'm just going to stick to YouTube for them so I can do them whenever I want. And it gets the views up in theory. An extra 10 views here and there. Brilliant. Maybe a little bit helps. Yeah. But yeah, until next time. You, you sort of nicked that off me, haven't you? Until next time, it's been a killer yeah. story. <laughs> this That's has it. been a killer story. Yeah. But you, you've you got your whole uh, yeah. cheerio. Until next time. <laughs> cheerio. <laughs>